Maybe they got knocked. Okay, so unit one, right. So yesterday we did like um, three different questions and I believe that is enough. And today we are going to move towards the graphs, okay. So before we go into the graphs, I would like to tell you that there are certain rules that we need to follow. And if you remember these rules, you will never ever interpret the graph the wrong. Graph, the wrong. Graph, okay. Sorry about that. Now, so when you see basically a line like this, which is going upwards, this means this line has a positive gradient. Gradient and slope is the same thing in maths. And if you see a line down, going down, it means it has a negative gradient. If you don't know still what gradient is, so you should remember that the gradient in math is found out by rise over run or y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. These are the two coordinates. Is it clear, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, so basically graphs are made up of three different lines. A line which is absolutely flat, a line that is slanted and straight, and a line that is exactly vertical. When it's absolutely flat, it means basically I, I denote gradient with m. So its gradient is always zero because there is no slope. If it's slanted and straight line, this means gradient is constant. And if it is uh, vertical, this means gradient is maximum or you could call it as infinity. Is it clear, everybody? Yes, sir. Now, if you see a curve like this, this means that this curve basically started, the line started with a horizontal orientation and now it has gone vertical, which means we can comment that here the gradient is increasing. You can also use these rules in math and if the line is going like from a vertical tangent to a horizontal one, this means that the gradient is decreasing. Is it clear everybody? Now I want you guys to keep like write these down and while I'm basically solving, like I'm showing you the graphs, you should always have these rules right next to you. Maybe write it on a page, tear it off, keep it next to you, or just keep it open while you're interpreting the graphs that we're going to do today. All right, now. So the first type of graphs that we're going to do are the displacement time graphs. In displacement time graphs, I just want to tell you that their gradient is represented by velocity, okay? So I'm gonna draw some graphs here. I need to close this app. This this is glitching. I don't know why. Probably my app has not been updated for a very long time. I'll do it today. Okay, for some reason it's here.
Let's move it here. And um, so on this side we have displacement in meters. Displacement in meters, displacement in meters, displacement in meters, displacement in meters. Now, so the first graph basically shows straight line, shows a straight line like this, line like this, line like this, and a line like this. All right. Now. If you look at the very first line, the first graph, it basically shows you exactly this line. Do you guys understand? Which means, which means that here the gradient is zero, which means the velocity is zero. It means the object is at rest. Is it clear, everybody? In the second one, it looks like this, which means the velocity is constant because the gradient is constant. In the next one, we're going to make two tangents like this and like this. So you might see that the graph is going up and it's like the tangents are like horizontal in the start and vertical at the end, almost vertical, which means the velocity is increasing and it is also positive because the gradient is positive. The arrow shows you the direction of that, like whether it's positive or negative. Is it clear everybody? So then what you're going to do is, for the next one, I could draw a tangent here and then a tangent here. So that tells me that basically the graph went from a vertical, almost vertical tangent to a horizontal one, which means velocity is decreasing. And because the arrow is going up no matter where, it means it is also positive. Burhan Manahil. Do you guys understand this? Yes. Sir, can you explain this one again? The one you just did? Yes. So basically when you draw the tangent, so tangent is a line that touches only one point on the curve, right? So you see it's almost vertical and then it is like becomes horizontal at the end, which means that it's like this case it, vertical to horizontal so it is it means the gradient is decreasing understood yeah and if you look at the arrows if you draw arrows the line is still going up it never goes down which means it is positive understood okay so you just got to look at that now in the last line it is a straight flat line. It is a uh, slanted straight line, which means velocity has to be constant because it is uh, just like this. But the problem is that the arrow are going down, which means it is negative. Do you guys understand the opposite direction? Yes. Easy, right? Do you, can you interpret the yeah. next set of graphs if I ask you? Uh, sure. Okay. So the next set of graphs basically are called velocity time graphs. Velocity time graphs gradient is represented by acceleration. You're going to comment on acceleration now. So in order to catch velocity time graphs, you just need to look at the y-axis. I'm going to make the same set. 
In fact, on the y-axis, there will be now velocity in meters per second. All right, everybody. Now it shows you flat line, straight line, curve up, curve down, straight line. Okay, one by one, I'm going to ask you now. This doesn't look like a straight line. Okay. So, first of all, we're going to comment on the acceleration in all of these. So starting with Burhan. Burhan, what do you say about the first one? Uh, so the acceleration is zero. There's no acceleration. Because the gradient is zero, so acceleration is zero. So then, uh, Manahil, can you comment on the velocity in the first graph? What is happening to the velocity row? It stays the same. Yeah, so velocity is like, it, it has the same value. You just need to check the y-axis. Velocity is constant here. Okay, very good. Now, Ariba. Ariba, what about the acceleration in the next graph? So, acceleration is uh, same. Constant, right. Is it positive or negative? It is positive. It is positive. Very good. So, Burhan, what about the velocity? Is it increasing, decreasing, constant? What? So the velocity will be changing. How? Is it increasing? It is decreasing. What is happening? Yeah. Okay, yes. If you Sir, is the velocity constant? No. You see, if the line is going up, line is going up, which means the value on the y-axis is increasing, so it has to be increasing. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what about uh, Manahil? Can you please tell me the acceleration in the next graph? It's increasing. Very good. Is it? It is increasing. In fact, okay. And then Ariba, what about the velocity? Sir, the velocity is also increasing. Increasing, very good. It is increasing because the arrows are going up, which means y-axis values are going up as well. Now, Burhan, can you comment on the acceleration in the next graph? Uh, so it's decreasing. It is decreasing, that's correct. And Manahil, can you comment on the velocity then? It's decreasing as well. No. If the value, you see, it started from this point and then it ended at that point. So it means velocity has increased, not decreased. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, I guess. Just it. look at the arrows. Never ever guess it. Look at the arrows. If the arrows are not going down, it means it is not decreasing. Okay, now. All right, Ariva, acceleration in the next one. Acceleration is um, decreasing? No. A straight line slanted means gradient is? Um, constant. Constant. Is it positive or negative? It's negative. Negative. Which means this is decelerating. Is it clear, everybody? Now, Sorry. then, Burhan, can you t please tell me what is happening to the velocity? Uh, so the velocity is decreasing? Yeah, it is decreasing. And we know this because now the arrow is down, which means the velocity, the y-axis values are going down. Do you guys understand now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I hope now it will be very easy for you to interpret what will happen, what is really happening where. So whenever you see a graph, no matter what kind of graph it is, you can always interpret about the gradient and about the y-axis values and that's what basically matters now. So then 
we also need to know about the area under the velocity time graph. Now let's check it out. So the area under velocity time graph basically is represented by the displacement. It could be distance as well if we ignore the signs, but we look at it. So first of all, we're going to draw a graph. And then we're going to see what is exactly happening. OK, I need to basically draw it on fixed scales. Suppose the graph looks like this. So this is velocity in meters per second, this is time in seconds, this is um, 2, this is 6, this is um, 8, and 9, and 12, suppose, okay, supposing the values really. And this is 40 positive, and this is minus 20. Okay, with everybody? Now, so three formulas you need to know and always remember. From, for the triangle, we have half times base times height. For the rectangle, we have base times height. And for the trapezium, we got half times the height times sum of parallel sides. Okay, everybody? Now, so you can basically take them as uh, trapeziums or you can take them as, uh, you know, um, you can you just break it into shapes. So we'll take the last one is trapezium and the first one as we break it just for just for practicing right but you can do it like once this is first shape second shape third shape let's take this all as the fourth shape so what they want is they say find distance and displacement so first let's look at the first shape in shape one, we got a triangle, which basically seems like half times the base is 2 times the height is 40. So that would be 40 meters. In the second one, it is going to be this distance, really, which is 4 times 40, which is um, 4 into 4 is, I think, 36, right? 16. Oh my god, my mental math has gone really bad. Okay. And then the next one, third shape is half times 2 times 40. That's also 40 meters. It doesn't look like 40 meters, but it's okay. Alright, now, when you add all of them together, it's going to be 240 meters. And now let's look at the shape. So for shape 2, we uh, can take it as a trapezium. So this side is uh, three, 9 minus 12. This would be 3, and that would be 4. So for trapezium, the fourth shape, I could write half times the height, which is minus 20, times 4 plus 3. So that's going to be 10 and 7, minus 70. Is it clear, everybody? Now, once you have basically found all the area, so for... <coughs> <coughs> Alhamdulillah, sorry. Distance, 
you just need to add the values together and ignore the sign because distance is a scalar quantity that would mean that this will be 310 meters but for displacement you gotta take the sign into your consideration which means this is going to be 240 positive minus 70 negative that will give you 170 meters do you guys understand this please do let me know yes okay good so just make sure that displacement is a vector quantity so you always need to remember that now sometimes the graphs may not be regular shapes so you might not be able to find the areas just by the formulas so we're going to draw that kind of graph and then we're going to look at it by the way when the meeting ends in seven minutes you guys need to rejoin now um okay give me like one minute to draw this kind of graph So whenever this sort of graph comes, they will always give you uh, a grid. Grid means a sort of a graph where this will be displayed. So you can actually not worry about it. So that's why I just need to make a grid quickly. My grid is very very small. It should have been bigger, but that's okay. That's um, but I think it should be bigger. But still, okay. Back to the view. Okay, so on this side we got like velocity in meters per second. On this side we have time in second, and now. There is a graph that shows something like this, okay? So this is a method of estimation. And you guys need to understand because we don't have any particular formulas. This is a very unknown chip. So we learn to estimate. So let's suppose this is like 4, 12, uh, 4. 8, 12, minus 4, minus 8, minus 12. This is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. All right? So the first thing you guys need to do, step one, is to find area of one whole box so you can take any box really so if you look at the box like on the grid it's two on this side and four on this side so the area would be two times four is eight meters is it clear everybody Now the next thing you're going to do is to count number of full boxes. By that I mean the boxes which are completely under the ground. So we're going to take this shape as the one and two. we're going to do it like separately for these. So one, two, three, this is almost complete, so four, five, 
this isn't complete and I just um, would like to take like this three and this one is almost complete as well so this is just estimation okay I just took it like this and then step three would be count number of half boxes so what you're going to do you're going to count one two three four i'm going to take care of this five this small one is six and that's seven now you might be wondering how is this six box half and why is this five box half because what i'm saying is that basically if you combine five and six together it is going to give you one complete box so this is just estimation right similarly you can combine two and one you can combine um, four and three right like that is it clear everybody which would mean that seven half boxes if combined together would give me 3.5 full boxes please look at this and let me know if you don't understand now step four total full boxes are going to be six plus three point five that's going to be nine point five boxes what i'm saying is then step five you write if one full box has an area of eight meters then 9.5 boxes will have x and you're going to cross multiply this so the total area that you're going to get for the first shape is going to be 76 meters any questions okay now we're going to do the same thing for uh, the next shape, the second shape. For that one, I'm just going to quickly do this. I'll take that as full. I'll take that as full. And I'm going to take this, 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 okay, and this, and this as half. So what you're going to do next is that the same thing so full boxes you have two half boxes you have one two three five which is equivalent to 2.5 full boxes so the total full would be 4.4 4.5 boxes All right, all right, so you guys are here now. So then, again, if one box is equal to eight meters that we did in step one, then 4.5 boxes are going to be X, I'm going to cross multiply, which basically makes the whole thing like eight times 4.5 to be 36 meters now. Of course, this was a negative, so we'll write negative. Now, if I want to find the distance, 
the distance would be 76 plus 36, which is going to be, I think, 112, but still I'm going to check. Okay, and for displacement, I need to use the signs. So that's going to be 76 minus 36. It's going to be 40, but let's still check. 40. All right, you guys understand everything? Any questions now? Ariba? Yes, sir. You got any questions? Manahil? And Burhan? No, it's fine. Okay, great. All right. So up till now, what we've basically learned is that there are three things that we're looking at. We're basically looking at displacement, then we looked at velocity and then we looked at acceleration. All right, so these three quantities were involved in all our analysis. So basically, if you want to go from, if you want to know about velocity from displacement, basically you need to find the gradient. So the gradient of displacement time is velocity and the gradient of velocity time is acceleration. Do you guys understand? Yes. And if you go from like yes, velocity to displacement, you want to go here. So you've got to find area under the graph. And that would give you the displacement. So basically, this is something we need to remember. Going from acceleration to velocity is not a, the part of our course. You do it in, I think, mathematics, but not in physics, right? So we're not going to go there. Okay. Now. The only thing that now is left is that we do we actually went from displacement to velocity and velocity to acceleration. But what if we need to change the same graph into three? So let's see what we can do, okay? So this is basically, put the heading, it's conversion of graphs. So a lot of times the examiner is going to tell you to he might have given you a graph and then he might say, okay, draw a graph of velocity time graph according to it or acceleration time. So what you're gonna do then? So let's see. So I'm just gonna draw a couple of drawings and then we are going to analyze them. And this is where these uh, this chapter gets tricky because it confuses you if you don't remember the rules that I just uh, told you, okay? So just go through the rules once, please, while I'm drawing this so that you guys are aware what you are trying to find in it, okay? Let me just try displacement in meters, time in seconds, velocity in meters per second, time in seconds, acceleration in meters per second squared, and time in seconds. Okay, so I just wanted these graphs. Oh, oh no, what did I do? doesn't want to move I don't want to move okay now okay please go through the rules once Burhan do you know where is Safir these days yesterday you, uh, yesterday you were not in the class right yeah I wasn't and today he's not in the class what do I do <laughs> with you people I have no idea man. this point there's no point in me asking him because yeah. I think even if he joins now. Yeah. So every day you guys probably have decided, okay, one of us is going to take the class. 
like okay what kind of friends you are now so um Okay, so the first set of graph that we're going to do is an easy one, and then we're going to look at two different graphs. So suppose in the first one they have given you a straight line, and they want you to convert this into velocity and acceleration, right? If I look at the first graph, can you please tell me about the velocity in the first graph? Anyone? Uh, zero. And it's staying zero throughout that time, which means that we can draw this graph just here. What do you guys say? Manahil, do you understand this? Yeah. Now, what can you tell me about the acceleration in this graph? Let me go here. And now we're going constant. To no. Acceleration is constant. It's a flat line. And flat line means? Zero. Zero, Manahil. Is it clear? Oh, yeah, okay. I get it. Which means the acceleration will also be zero. And it makes sense because, you know, that if the velocity is constant, like velocity is not changing, then acceleration would not be there at all. Right? That, that's what it means. Okay. Now let's do a difficult question. So they have given you a curve like this. And they want you to convert it to this, and they want you to convert it to this, right? Whenever something like this is given, always try to basically create some sections where there are major, major changes happening. So I just made A, B, C. So from A to B, I can see the tangent is like going from vertical to horizontal. What do you think in the first section, A, B? is happening to the uh, velocity. Sir, who are you asking? Anyone, if you can answer. Sir, from A to B, the velocity is increasing. Velocity is increasing, are you sure? I don't think so. Yes, A to B, right? A to B. Velocity, remember, is the gradient of the graph. Ah, uh, yes, it's decreasing. It is decreasing. So it I means that the, slope. the velocity was higher, and now it is decreasing from A to B. Agreed? Now, Manahil, can you tell me what is happening from B to C? To the velocity? Yes decreasing it is decreasing i don't think so the gradient is going from a flat line to a vertical line shouldn't it be increasing but how is it from a to b how's it decreasing no i'm asking pro of i'm asking about b to c because we're done a to b i don't get a to b either look at the tangent at A, it is vertical, right? Almost vertical. And B, it is a flat line. So if you go back to the rules that I've taught you, that I believe you're not looking at, when you go from a horizontal line to a vertical line, it is increasing. Right? And when you go from a vertical line to a horizontal line, it is decreasing. Don't you think so? Okay, so we look at the tangents. Yeah, 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 exactly. This is what I want you to do. So from A to B, you see the tangent in the start was vertical and it's horizontal. So velocity must be decreasing, right? Because in displacement time graph, the gradient basically shows velocity. Understood? Yeah. So that's why in the next graph, we have shown that velocity has decreased 
Got it? It's going down. Now, I want you to tell me what is happening because we've just drawn half the graph. I want you to tell me what is happening between B and C about the velocity. Look at the tangents and decide. Yes, Manai. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, there's one. Sorry. It's decreasing. Velocity, uh, the velocity is decreasing? How? I said look at the oh, increasing, increasing okay. because it is going from horizontal to vertical. Is it increasing in the positive direction or the negative direction? Negative direction. So it means the line will continue to increase in the negative direction. Do you understand now? Yeah. So the positive velocity decreased to zero till point B and then it went into negative and it started increasing. That's why the line is a straight line that continues. Is it clear? Both of you? Yes. Now can you tell me what is happening to the acceleration? It's a straight line going down. What can you tell me about the acceleration? A straight line gradient is, is a constant. It's a constant acceleration. It's a deceleration. It is constant. That's correct because it's a straight line. What about the sign? Is it positive or is it negative? Uh, negative deceleration. Negative. So it means that now constant on acceleration would be on the negative axis like this. Do you guys understand? Yes. Manahil, is it clear? Yeah. Hmm. Excellent. Should I make it a bit more difficult then? No. <laughs> no. One more graph. Because the thing is that these these three graphs might be there. Okay, so I want you to learn this. So the, now I'm not going to give you displacement. In fact, I'm going to give you the velocity graph like this. So it says A, B and B, C, okay, like that. First of all, because to draw acceleration would be easier, I want you to think about it. What is the acceleration of A to B? A constant, a constant. Okay, A is constant, right? And positive yes. or negative? Uh, positive. Positive. So we can draw a constant line that basically makes it positive. Okay. What happens from B to C, Manahil? It's accelerating. We know that, but is it constant? Is it increasing? It is decreasing. What is happening? It's also constant. Constant. And is it positive or negative? It's still negative. Are you sure? Because it's going in the positive direction. So it will be positive then, not negative. Because the arrow is up, it means it's positive. No matter where the, where the quadrant is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't decide about the gradient just looking at the y-axis. That is what the velocity is. You just need to look at what is happening to the gradient. Which means there is a slight, you know, change so we're going to make that dotted line and then till c it is still constant and they're parallel to the same value do you understand now yes okay now we're going to go back which is the harder part can you comment on the velocity from a to b sir who are you asking uh you from A to B, the velocity is increasing. Velocity is increasing. 
how do you show increasing velocity on displacement? Think about it. Increasing velocity? Uh, yeah. Like that slope upward? So which means that it would be like this? Yes. Manahil, do you agree? Yes, slope upwards. Okay. Can you tell me, Manahil, what is happening from B to C then? In terms of velocity? Yes. It's increasing. Velocity is increasing. That's correct. Okay. If the velocity is increasing, so, all right, and um, what do you say about, like, okay, fine, velocity is increasing or is it decreasing in the negative direction? That's my question. No, it was negative before, right? At this B, it is negative, and now it is zero. So velocity is increasing or it, decreasing? So it's still going up. It's going up. That's Probably correct. Negative. That's yeah. correct. But you're talking about the gradient. I'm saying the velocity, the negative velocity, the value is increasing or decreasing? Uh, increasing? No. The velocity is going from a negative value to zero, that's correct. But the value is like the magnitude is decreasing, right? Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. Like in vectors, we only look at the magnitude, right? Not the sign. Signs are for direction. So if I rephrase my question, if I say, okay, please, can you please tell me what is happening to the magnitude of velocity? Is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Decreasing. Okay. So the value, the velocity is going to decreasing and in what direction? In the negative direction? Is it the negative is decreasing or the positive is decreasing? Negative. Okay. So what kind of graph should we draw? Then think a decreasing gradient which is negative. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So a decreasing gradient is what kind of line? Curve like vertical to horizontal or horizontal to vertical? Vertical to horizontal. So it means vertical would be like this and it will go horizontal at the end. Just see? And yeah. Do you guys understand yes. now? Yeah. So the idea behind this is that basically you guys need to always remember what is the gradient and that's that's why i wrote this right so you guys know exactly what we are and where we are going to understood otherwise it would be very very difficult on you any questions now uh, no sir all right, Manahil, is, is it 100% clear? I have to go over it again. If so, I have any questions, I'll ask. Yeah, sure. Just watch the recording again and let me know if you have any con confusions because we need to basically go past this, okay? Again, I just want okay. to, you know, tell you, uh, especially about, you know, you guys understood this graph, but of course this is difficult for you. When we are going from like A to B, we know the acceleration is positive and it is constant. Why do we know it is positive? Because the gradient is constant and positive. So the gradient would define this, right? So whatever gradient shows, we can draw on acceleration. So basically acceleration is constant as it's saying the same value and it is positive and from B to C it is again co constant and because the arrow is up it is positive that's why B to C is there and because there is a shift in the basically um, graph that shift is shown by the dotted line that I've drawn right 
just to show that there is a uh, there was sort of a change in direction understood of the velocity now going back if you look at this graph only this part you might see that x velocity is increasing and when you go there you need to understand that on the displacement time graph we have to show an increasing velocity in the positive direction do you understand an increasing velocity like it is increasing in the positive direction and so it means the increasing curve means that our tangent should be like horizontal first and vertical later do you understand yeah now let's look at this when you look at this part you might see that now it is decreasing in terms of the negative gradient like basically velocity is decreasing negatively which means that basically the negative value is becoming smaller and smaller understood so if it was minus 50 so now it is gone zero so the value has decreased in the negative direction do you understand So we want to make a decreasing magnitude of velocity for the decreasing gradient but in the negative direction. So we drew decreasing would be shown by vertical to a horizontal tangent and in the negative direction would mean the arrow should be gradient should be downwards. Understood? Like this. Any questions now? So I believe